Hello students and welcome to this video for um, Excel chapter number one hands-on exercise number three. Um, I'm not going to really be talking through the as much of the information here um, today because um, you're going to be using you've either used most of this information before um, or you're going to be learning it in the hands-on exercise. So I'm actually going to jump right into it here with this one. It's page 438 of your textbook, page 438. You'll notice I've opened up my previous file from the last exercise because we're going to be using it today to continue on. Um, oftentimes you're going to find with projects that you do for your school things and things like that, um, it's going to constantly build where you won't necessarily finish it all in one time. So you got to come back to this. So this is good practice for you because you're going to be using this um, for assignments later on. Um, the concept of doing a little bit here, doing a little bit there, not getting it all done at one time. Sometimes you can. Sometimes there's that opportunity to do that, but a lot of times it's in small amounts. So page 438, we're working on worksheet structure and clipboard tasks. Now, in case you forgot from last time, clipboard is referring to your ability to copy and paste. And it's a little bit different here with Excel because um, you can see here with our paste tools, here's a couple of paste options, but there's actually a lot of different ones that are going to come up that we can use. And you're going to be quizzed over those. Um, so it's good to look over those um, if you get confused here um, and to know those. All right, we're on step A, and it says right away we're saving the file under a new name. So I'm going to click File. I'm going to choose Save As, same folder I was in before. And I'm going to switch it to H3 Markup. So of course this is, oh, excuse me, this is Excel Chapter 1 H3. Of course, I have my last name and first name. You have your last name and first name. And let's save that. I'm going to replace the file. I already have one, but I'm replacing it here. All right, then it says, step B, click cell H5. So I'm going to column H, going down to 5, right under profit margin, this number here. And then it says, um, you want to insert a column between this sale price and profit margin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the insert arrow over here in my cells group. So here's cells group. I'm on the home tab, insert. And now you notice, um, make sure you watch and see how this works here. So I'm choosing insert, insert, wow, excuse me, sheet columns. It took the information that was in the column H here and shoved it to the right. So keep that in mind. When you're wanting to insert a row or something like that, um, our column, it's going to shove the information to the side. So make sure you click in the right cell uh, for the right row or column so that way it does that properly. Then it says click on H4. So this is step D, H4, and we're typing in profit amount. And then press enter. So it moves our active cell down. So profit amount, then push enter. Then it says ensure the active cell is H5, which it is. And then it says we're going to type in a formula. So it equals G5 minus C5. You can see it's got our color-coded cells to show which ones we're referring to. And then press Enter. It's going to move down our active cell one. Then it says double-click the H5 uh, fill handle. So I'm going to click back up here to H5, and I'm going to double-click that fill handle. And of course, it fills in the rest of those cells here with the formula. All right, we're on step F now. We're moving through this fast here. Apparently, I need to pay insurance. <laughs> I set a lot of reminders on my computer um, and phone. So we have here step F. Right click the row five heading. Now, when it talks about that, we're going over here. These are our headings. So these are our row headings here. These are our column headings. So when it says the row five heading, I'm going to the number five, clicking it, and it selects the whole row. And I could go on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever to the right. It has the whole thing selected. Now we're going back up to our cells group, and we're going to click on the insert arrow. And it says we're going, um, actually not even the insert arrow, we're going to actually click the insert button. And you see it put in a brand new row because we selected. Now, if I just clicked on one cell, it would only have shoved down the one row. Um, but because I selected the whole row, it went and put a new one here and it shoved it down. So if I put a new column, it shoves it to the right. If I put in a new row, it shoves it down. So um, pay attention to that. 
So we just finished step F. We're now on page 439. Step G says click on cell A5. So we got that whole new row we just put in. It says type in electronics. So I'm going to do that right now. Electronics. And it says hold down control and push enter. So I did that. It leaves it the active cell. It says click bold in the font group. So I'm going to click on bold in the font group and it changes it to bold. That's good. Then it says, for step H, right-click the row 8 heading. So I'm going to go down to row 8, but I'm actually right-clicking it. And it says um, to click Insert from the shortcut menu. So I'm doing that. Um, it actually said to right-click earlier, and I left-clicked by accident for row 5. So I click Insert, and it does the same thing as if I click the button up here. So um, I did actually do the wrong one, but that's okay. We got the same result. And so that's fine. We don't have to go back and fix it. Um, once we've done that, it says click and sell A8. So just A8 and type furniture. So we did that. Hold down control, push enter, and it says to bold it. So I can click it or I can hold down control and press B to do that. All right, I'm going to save my workbook. Remember, this is a workbook, the file itself, with a worksheet in the file. So worksheet in the file. Step two here, we're going to delete a row and hide a column. So it says in step A, click cell A9. So I have cell, or excuse me, cell A5 right there. Here's A9, so filing cabinet. And it says click the delete arrow in the cells group. So delete arrow in the cells group. And it says to click delete sheet row. So we got, we're getting rid of our filing cabinet row. So you can see it's gone now deleted. Then it says for step C, click the column B heading. So right up here is my column B heading. I click on that and it does that right there. Then it says for step D, click format in the cells group. So here's cells group right here, format. And I'm choosing, it says point to the hide and unhide. So let's find that here. Right here, visibility, hide and unhide. And that says hide columns. So this is a useful tool. Sometimes you only want to look at certain parts of the information. So I just selected the column I wanted to hide, and I can choose Format, Hide, and Unhide. Now it's still there. I can bring it back. That's OK. You can see there's a little gap right there. The information's still there. I just hit it. It says Step E, Save Your Workbook. And we're moving on here to page or, uh, 440 with step number three. So we've got six steps total. We're about halfway through. And it says we're going to adjust the column width and the row height. Now, step A on page 440, point to the right border of column A. So the right border, so this side of column A. And you can see I got that double-headed um, black arrow. Then it says point to the right border of column A, which we did that until the double-headed arrow appears, which we did. Drag the border to the left until the screen tip displays. So I actually have a screen tip display right away when I click it. So you can see it adjusts it here, the size of the column. Um, and it looks like it, we want to drag it all the way till it says 23 pixels. Now I'm going to have to let go of it and click again so I can see how many pixels. You see how it's going down pixels each time I'm doing it? It's like a door of the explorer moment. I'm asking you questions now. Um, so you want to be able to do that too. You should be able to see it. So um, 23, oh, excuse me. I need to have 23 width. That's very important to watch for that. So let's actually, it says drag it to the left, but we really need to drag it to the right. So I'm going to actually do that. Drag it to the right. Um, ignore the left part. So I'm going to click on it again so I can see it. 166 pixels. Sometimes it looks a little bit off. Um, because the thing's changing. See, we always analyze and adjust. All right, we got 23 width, 166 pixels. So it actually should be over here. So you can see it works well because our information fits inside of that. All right, so we decrease the column width. There's a little weird wording for those steps. Then it says click cell A1, so office systems pricing information and we're going to click format in the cells group so cells group format and we're going to choose row height so 
So we can actually click and drag um, on each of these borders. That includes rows down here. Or you can choose format and do row height or column width. So we're going to do row height for this one. So I click that. Um, the row height box comes up over here. Right now it's at 15, but we're going to change it to 30. And then we're going to click OK. And you can see it's changed the row height um, there. Save the workbook. We're on step four now. Select a range and move a range to a new location. Now we set a range. Um, you may have noticed this in the textbook here. Um, and you'll get it in your terms list quiz as well. A range is a group of cells. So it's not like a range with a bunch of animals. It's a range with a group of cells. So when I click like this and select them, it's a group of cells. Now, there's another type of range we're going to talk about later. But right now, um, we're going to just say that for the sake of practicality. So a range is a group of cells next to each other like this. All right, so um, it says right-click row 8 heading. So I'm going to right-click the row 8 heading. You can see it selects all of row 8. And then it says to choose insert. So I'm adding in another row. So right-click row 8 heading, choose insert. It does that for me. Then it says select range A12 through I12. So I'm going up here to row A, and I've got A12, or excuse me, not row A, column A, A12 through I12. So it's this 27-inch monitor row. I'm selecting like this right here, A12 through I12. So I've selected that range. You can see I start with the right cell. It's very important to check and make sure you get the right cells before you do stuff. Then it says, click cut in the clipboard group. So clipboard group is right here under my home tab. I'm choosing cut. Remember cut, you're taking that information. You're going to move it somewhere else. So I clicked cut. Then what we're going to do is you can see our status bar down here says select the destination, push enter, or choose paste. And you can see our we got that moving line. So that's how we can tell it actually works. So it says click cell A8. That's step D. Click cell A8. And it says click paste in the clipboard group. So I'm clicking on the paste button, not the word paste, the paste button itself. And it moves it for me to that new row. So you can see we're organizing it. We got electronics here and then furniture here. So we moved it to the group it needs to go in. And of course it says to save our workbook. All right, we're on the second to last big step here. It says copy and paste a range is what we're going to do. So we're on page 442. We're going to select the range A10 through I10. So right here I'm starting with desk chair. That's A10. And I'm just clicking and dragging. Do you see I'm doing that? I didn't emphasize that earlier, but I click and drag to select multiple cells. A10 through I10. Then it says click copy in the clipboard group. I could hold down control and C to do that. And you can see I copy that row. Then we're on step B here. Um, step B says click cell A12. So we just copied A10 through I10. And then we got cell A12 selected. It says click paste in our clipboard group. So clipboard group here, I click paste. We just duplicated our row basically. Then it says click in cell A12. So just that one is selected. And press F2 to enable editing mode, which is really just, it's almost like I'm double clicking on the cell. That's another way to do it. But editing mode is just the insertion point is there, and I can change the letters. Um, or I could even click up here to do that. Okay. Um, so we do have that. All right. Then what we're going to do is we are going to type in, um, it says, press home. So on our keyboard home, that brings us to um, the front of the box. And then I type in executive and a space. So it looks like that, executive desk chair. And then I push enter. Then it says, um, change the value in C12. So right here, C12 to 200. Because the chair is worth more since it's an executive desk chair. And then, of course, we're going to save it. All right, we're on step number six here. We're on the last step, overall big one. We're using paste special. So Excel is different in the fact that because we're dealing with formulas, we're dealing with dates, we're dealing with all kinds of different things, um, we have that paste arrow for when we have something selected. We can choose what kind we want. And you're going to see them in action here. So step A on page 443, it says click on cell A1. So I'm going to go up here to the top, click cell A1. I'm going to change the font size here to 14. So click a couple times it makes it a lot bigger 
Then it says, I'm going to bold it, so I'm going to hold down Control and push B, which makes it bold. Then it says, click the font color arrow right here and select gold, accent 4, darker 50%. So right down here, it's this one. After that, step B, select range A1 through I12. So right here, this cell A1 through... I-12, so I actually, oh, oh, one more row over, I have to go, there we go, A-1 through I-12, so you can see, I'm going to zoom out a little bit here, so you can see a little bit better, there we go, A-1 through I-12, and it says click copy in the clipboard group, so I click copy, you can see the whole thing is selected here, then it says click cell A-15, so right here is row 15, uh, column A and it says click the paste arrow paste arrow now there's a bunch of different options and we're gonna be going through using them um, here throughout these chapters and we're gonna point to formulas it's this one right here I believe formulas and it says it's the second icon from the left and we are going to then position it don't click yet this is just for you to be able to see it I'm actually gonna scroll down a little bit here so you can see this a little bit better so I click paste, I got form, uh, formulas here, and that says point over to the first icon from the right, which is formulas and number formatting. It's not the first one, um, but you can see it does change a little bit. One's formulas, one's formatting, formulas and numbers, so you can see the date shows up properly. So we're actually going to click that one, so because we have a date. Then it says click cell H6 to see a formula, so H six to see the formula so and you can see that and then it says go down to so you can see it's g6 through c6 and then we're going down to h20 which i believe is right here and you can see it's changed to g20 and c20 it adjusted it for us it's a nice thing to copy and paste it says press escape to turn off the border so we did that it no longer is showing a border up here you'll notice it didn't keep our formatting because of the type of pasting we selected all right, step G, it says save the workbook. And of course, you can keep it open if you're going on to the next exercise. Otherwise, that is how you complete Excel chapter one, hands-on exercise number three.